Ask a dozen random people on the street what the president's job is, and you'll get a dozen different answers, none of them correct. You'll probably also get some rude comments and people crossing to the other side of the road to avoid you. But that has more to do with modern American manners than any knowledge of government and politics. According to the Constitution, the president is to function as the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, providing civilian control over the professional military, as the chief diplomat, and to faithfully execute the law. Notice that nothing is said about making laws. The president might be able to suggest a law, but he can't make them, but most people today think he can. But nothing is as simple as it. Let's step into a time machine, shall we? Science and magic and who knows what else have allowed you to be sent back to September 11th, 2001. Shock of shocks, you're the president that morning. Everyone is in super panic mode. No one can tell you exactly what is going on. Is this an act of war from a rogue state like North Korea? Is this an accident, a horrible tragedy like the sinking of the Titanic or explosion of the Hindenburg? Is it some kind of crime? There are literally thousands of airplanes in the sky. Are they all poised to come screaming to Earth? The Constitution could not anticipate the situation. The President should seek the advice of Congress, procure some kind of vote, and then carry it out. But how many weeks, months, or years would that take? The President, at the time, made a unilateral decision to ground the entire civil aviation fleet, telling every airplane in the sky to land at the nearest airport regardless of the destination. It cost millions in delays. It was done without any authorization from Congress. But wasn't it necessary? Who should make the decisions in emergency situations? One man? The council? The Congress? Should the country vote? Is there time for that in an emergency situation? Most people would agree that in an emergency, you need a single voice making the decisions, a voice in the best position to have all the information, and that decision needs to be made fast, without check. Of course, this completely goes against the purpose of the Constitution. Ever since George Washington, Presidents have argued that they are in the best position to make informed decisions in an emergency, and that in order to faithfully execute their duties, they need to have complete power in those emergencies. This power is known as unity and energy in the executive, and is entirely extra-constitutional, perhaps even completely unconstitutional. And yet, almost every president, including founders like Adams, Jefferson, and Madison, would wind up claiming this power. In simpler terms, with unity and energy, Power rests with one man, unity, who can't be stopped, energy. Think of it this way. Say a fist is coming at your face. Unity and energy says the brain makes the call to move out of the way, and nothing overrides it. Imagine if your limbs called a conference to discuss the situation instead, and while your face was crying out to move, your legs were talking about how tired they were. Wham! You just got hit in the nose. Sometimes these powers are known as emergency powers or war powers. There is even a law passed by Congress that acknowledges that unity and energy is necessary, the War Powers Act of 1941. Of course, they also passed the War Powers Resolution of 1973, calling unity and energy a danger and limiting a president's use of this power. This properly enacted law has been ignored by several presidents since 1973. Of course, this power is necessary at times, and abused at times. Even the best U.S. presidents have misused it in the past. Andrew Jackson used his power during his term by uprooting the Cherokees from their traditional homes in the East and forcing them to move along the Trail of Tears. When ordered by the Supreme Court to respect the Cherokees' right to self-government, Jackson famously retorted, The court made its decision, let's see them enforce it. The Native Americans were deported by the army. Abraham Lincoln suspended habeas corpus in the border states during the Civil War. Franklin Roosevelt used the War Powers Act of 1941 to order almost a quarter million Japanese American citizens into internment camps during World War II. Unity and energy, completely necessary and dangerous.